Welcome to Smarter Storage for Tomorrow's Opportunities, where we are going to dive into what are the essential characteristics of storage that will help organizations manage their way through the AI data tsunami in a resilient, efficient, and easy to use manner. To help me unpack this, I'm joined by Drew Schulke, who's the VP of Product Management Primary Storage at Dell, and Raphael Meyerowitz, who's the VP of Partner Go-To-Market at Presidio. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. I, I, I couldn't you know, think of a better way to start out with is really the importance of resilience in data and how, because data really needs to be resilient from an AI strategy perspective. And in the age of AI, why is that data resilience more critical than ever for businesses? And how is AI impacting the need for always on data access and data integrity? What do you, what do you see from your perspective, Drew, first? Yeah, sure, um, great question. So I think we've always lived in a world where storage has always needed to be on and available. And I, I think in the world as we're shifting to more, you know, this age of AI, the consumers of that data are growing. And you know, is the is the data accessible to those who should have access? Along with that comes performance expectations. You know, even for those that are net new consumers, you know, that will mostly be seeking read access. You, you've got a lot more consumers of that data, right? So, how do you make sure that everybody's getting necessary performance uh, associated with that story storage? I'd say there's another angle here in the age of AI that we need to be just very transparent about is thinking about the, the evolution of the threat landscape. One that's already pretty severe where you have ransomware attacks, you know, every 11 seconds and, you know, you know almost greater than 80% of businesses have been impacted by some sort of security attack over the past 12 months. AI, like any other tool invented over the course of human history can be used in both positive and nefarious ways. And our customers, rightly so, are expecting that the sophistication of attacks are likely to increase. And 71% of CIOs characterize AI threat levels as either very high or somewhat high within their organizations. Um, and so we need to be conscious of that aspect of, of AI as well. And so given all those unknowns of the needs of storage and sort of the evolving threat landscape you know it's important that you know we need to make sure we have future-proof systems and that definitely applies to resiliency as much as any other aspect of the platform i mean drew i think uh, you touched on a lot of things there um the first thing i think when you look at actually um the system that dell has today with power store is a few aspects that are actually rooted into the system specifically that actually help with AI. When you think about pinpointing issues across the stack within the storage array, a lot of that happens without the customer actually knowing about what's actually happening. And Dell can actually mitigate um, some of those challenges before they actually do occur. The other piece is, you know, predicting and preventing some of those issues from occurring in real time. That's AI under the covers with. Um, with Dell. And then when you when you put it together also, there's no AI without data. And oftentimes your primary data is living on a primary storage array. And if you can't access that data, you have no AI. So I think those those few things are really, really important. And then when you look at the threat landscape and what's actually happening, in a recent survey that I saw, 86% of customers pay the ransom. Why do they pay the ransom? Because they don't know what's going to happen. They need to get their business back up and running. And we need to make sure that the asset that the customer has today is not only protected from ransomware events, but in the case that the customer does have to rewind, how quickly can they actually rewind? I think that's really important. It's almost like you have to future-proof uh, what's going on. I mean, we see the same thing in the data we have. In fact, when we look at people who haven't gotten to production with a particular AI use case, you know, 31% of them are saying out of uh, over 340, 45 people that we polled are saying that, hey, it's partially because of security and resiliency that we're trying to, you know, figure out how do we make it more resilient. So 
you know, from that perspective, you know, what is the need for, you know, future-proof systems to really achieve true resilience? And, you know, what do you think future-proof really means and why is it essential to businesses today? I think in the, in the world of storage, I think about two dimensions there. One is that you always need to be ready to protect from any threat, which means you're engineering everything around your storage systems for a zero downtime experience. That's that's the expectation that we should have across all of our products. But you know, at the same time, you also need to be adaptable and willing to move fast and and evolve those protection models as the workloads and business needs change. So there's not like a, a single static answer for what zero town time looks like from an engineering perspective, it, it's an evolution. So there's there's certainly a defensive posture to this, but it's also about being positioned to seize the new opportunities that we're about to see. And to really go do that, you need intelligent systems with some of the points that Rafael alluded to earlier, where we're taking a lot of that work out of the hands of the operators on a day-to-day -day basis um, and if you can deliver that, you know, that's true resiliency in, in, from our perspective. Today, a customer may have X capacity on the floor from a power store standpoint. They need to make sure that they can expand that and they can do that non-disruptively. If you can't do that non-disruptively, you're disrupting the business. Yeah. And disrupting the business is not a good thing, especially because power stores built to run primary workloads for customers tier one workloads across uh, multiple hypervisors and multiple operating systems today. Having resilience because again, it's not just your data for your AI, it's data for your operations and your systems, your financials and things of that nature as well. But, you know, Drew, really, how does Dell PowerStore deliver resilience and what features make it future proof uh, from a storage solution perspective? And how is it capable of adapting to present and future demands that customers may be, you know, thinking about that next, you know, innovation of AI beyond what we see today. We hold that adaptability is one of the core tenets of PowerStore, and and the best way to be adaptable is via software, uh, which is where the majority of our R and D and our storage products go today. And we offer lots of way to deliver that adaptability uh, in in support of resiliency. So to, to begin with, you know both hardware and software, we, we've engineered the entire system for six nines of uptime. So you've got active active controllers, multiple points of hardware redundancy re to reduce, you know, the, the chance of a failure impacting any services. But then on top of that hardware, you know, how did we bring software into the story to deliver that resilience with an adaptive angle to it? Uh, a great example of that would be what we refer to as our dynamic resiliency engine. So we we have a 100% software-based approach to data integrity within our appliances that is far more distributed and automated and efficient than a, than a traditional RAID scheme. So, you know, examples of what we do within that is, you know, we can pool all the drives together to maximize our, our NVMe performance. Uh, we automate very complex tasks associated with things like drive configuration, redundancy and sparing so that we can take out 98% of the management effort compared to traditional RAID. Uh, single drive scalability, what a, what a, what a, a benefit for our customers to, to understand that they can scale out, scale up over time at that low denominator. Um, and then we look at things like how we do drive rebuilds. They're completely zero touch with options for either single or dual parity. And so you have no lapses in protection. Again, all of that through software. And so those elements work together to ensure that we've got continuous uptimes and adaptability um, on top of which we build, you know, our, our other, you know, resiliency methods for things like multi-site protection, et cetera. Yeah, no, I, I think that's good. Cause I, I think, again, it talks to how you're, you're really looking out and how actually it can adapt and software is great in that way that you can actually change it and upgrade it and do things, new things in it without having to change the underlying infrastructure and hardware. But Raphael, kind of from a data protection perspective, you know, data protection requires really a multi-layer approach when customers are really taking you know, stock in their infrastructure. From that customer perspective, can you explain how you see and how customers see PowerStore helping 
their organizations create holistic protection strategies that enhance both the data security and operational efficiency? Firstly, when you look at customers today, the first line of defense when they want to restore their data is specifically from snapshots. So there's this first line of defense that needs to happen. And that first line defense, Dell makes this easy. They have immutable snapshots that run specifically on PowerStore today. So customers have immutability in their snapshots. They cannot be deleted and they can recover very, very quickly because that's really just the end of the day, the metadata. Then when you think of other aspects of it, when you think about resiliency from a replication standpoint, whether you want to do asynchronous replication or if you want to do synchronous replication amongst different sites, you can do that as well. And then lastly, when you actually want to protect your storage, whether it's in the cloud or on-prem, there's native integration into uh, data domain which has been a product that has been around for many, many years that can help customers also uh, restore directly from their data domain into their power store. That intellectual property only exists today with Dell because Dell today owns all of those assets. So I think when you think about it, it's always what point in time are you actually looking to recover? We at Presidio, we have this uh, saying, we call it, uh, the boom, right? Before the boom and after the boom. And in both of those situations, Dell can protect you before the boom. And then if something does happen in your environment, you can actually restore that uh, data as well. So you have to make sure that you have systems that can actually be available in the case of something happening uh, in your environment. And, and I, I assume you've been seeing uh, this being taken advantage of and customers are really leaning into this. It's the number one thing that um, our customers are asking for today is tell me about the protection, tell me about the resiliency, and tell me what happens if I do get hit by ransomware, how can I recover, what mechanisms can I use to recover, because most customers today are actually going to get hit by ransomware. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. I, I think where, where you talk about 80% or 100% getting hit in a year, I mean, you know, sometimes they don't even know they've been hit. And I, I think yeah. that's the scary part is that these things are becoming way more sophisticated, uh, to put it mildly. And those threats, uh, you know, really are these attacks that are, you know, potentially AI generated or at least made easier. So, you know, Drew, with that being the fact, again, these threats are just that much more sophisticated, you know, powered by AI in some cases, or at least made more capable by AI. You know, how does PowerStore really facilitate that whole proactive zero trust security strategy? And what specific features contribute to that robust, you know, security posture for those organizations? Yeah, I, I think you need to look at the entire value chain of what we do with PowerStore to really encapsulate everything we do there. It, it begins all the way back in terms of how we develop the product, right? So we're, we're writing a lot of software and we're doing so aligned with the NIST framework, which leverages you know decades of enterprise experience and good practices to making sure that we've got security into the what I'll call the DNA of PowerStore to begin with. Once the product's then you know, in the customer's hands, look, it all begins with zero trust. That, that security strategy assumes that threats can come from both inside and outside the network. Uh, and, and the principle ensures that every access request is verified and only authenticated users and devices are granted access. It's, it's amazing if you look over the history over the past five years of all the cyber attacks that have taken place just in the US, the percentage of those that could have been prevented with just a simple zero trust security posture. It's greater than 90%. Um, so that's sort of, you know, the kind of the mindset that we have going in there, kind of going into a little bit more tactical, we look at what we're doing inside the box with things like hardware root of trust. So 
we ensure that every system component is verified before booting. So there's been no tampering from the hardware up and, and we can you know be that first line of defense to make sure there's no nefarious actors coming in and, and compromising the system. We look at decisions that we make in terms of the kind of media that we use. So we do FIPS validated drives. We do full data at rest encryption. So we've got an additional layer of validation and verification to ensure that you know, the implementation of encryption is completely secure. And then, you know, thinking about kind of extending that zero trust framework into things like access control, you, you look at multi-factor authentication. So we ensure that anybody accessing power stores management UI is strictly controlled and verified, uh, making it very, very difficult for, for malicious actors to gain access as well. And I'll, I'll let, you know, Raphael chime in on this, we're seeing things like MFA become ever increasing requirements on the part of, of customers um, in terms of, you know, basically table stakes for what they want to consider for their infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, look, before I hand it back to Raphael for his thoughts on that, I, I, I would also just add in, I, I don't want to ignore the progress that we're making um, on, on the, using AI ops to provide an AI powered, you know, threat detection. So we're always looking at the system for anomalies and potential threats, using machine learning to ident identify and mitigate those security risks, and you know making our observations available to our customers in real time alerts uh, and recommended responses. Um, so we're we're always on the lookout for this and, and trying to you know predict for our customers where there's potentially an evolution, and then you know finally I would add. You know the 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 customer set for us that has the most strictest and, and stringent security requirements is the U.S. federal government, um, and you know we look at things like Stig certification and and getting on the approved product list, which are things that we have done for for PowerStore, uh, which is that highest level of security that you can sell into any U.S. federal government agency. So um, those are some of the specific things we've done in the box. Um, I'd, I'd be curious to get Raphael's perspective on kind of thinking about kind of their customers and sort of what sort of, what are their concerns? You know, obviously you can have a data breach, but what else is coming their way that might be, uh, you know, influencing their thoughts on on this idea of how, how secure power store should be? Yeah, I think Drew, you mentioned a lot of things there, but one of the key pieces also is if you don't have all of these features and functionalities, you're not actually going to be able to get cyber insurance either. And if you don't have cyber insurance and you get attacked, what's going to happen? You're going to be paying, your company could actually shut down because you're going to lose so much money. So I think that's one aspect. And then when you think about it also from a customer standpoint, today, customers that are, you know, backed by the SEC and are public uh, companies, within four days they have to announce if they have been breached. Within four days, before it was months and months and months. And it hits the news within four days. Otherwise, there's significant risks and fines associated with that. And there was recently a company that actually got fined $25 million because they didn't actually tell the SEC about the breach within four days. I think they told them 20 days later. And the government's taking this pretty seriously. The financial industry is. And then when you think about some of the things that are going on, not just here in the United States, but all over the world, the governments are mandating and providing executive orders saying that certain things have to be in place to protect your data. This data is important, you know, and when you start looking at uh, geographic locations all over the world, you start looking at Europe where there's many, many countries, it's all about different, um, laws and rules within these countries. And the best the best uh, thing to do is provide some prevention based on, as you mentioned, multi-factor authentication, things like that that can really help prevent attacks from happening in the first place. Yeah, mm. no, I think that's the key. And I, I think, like you said, uh, I, my favorite, my favorite uh, regulation is DORA. And it's not to explore or anything like that. It's really around financial services and being able to be brought up within 
three days of a major attack and resiliency is at the core of things like DORA and other regulations uh, that you were talking about. So that, that is totally, you know, on par with what I'm hearing from organizations and their fears and how they're trying to be proactive with things like, you know, AI ops and others to really get out in front of that, uh, to be able to meet those reporting requirements as well. So I want to thank you both, Raphael and Drew, for coming on board. You know, Resilient is near and dear to my heart. I want to thank you for uh, coming on board today. Thank you for having us. Awesome. And uh, you all stay tuned and stay right there for more Smarter Storage for tomorrow's opportunities on theCUBE.